conversations and I want to remind you that it is very important to complete all of your work in McKesson. As of June 30th, we will no longer have access to document in McKesson. We will just have view rights. You can go in and look at things. And you'll be able to look things up, see uh, perhaps patients that were on before. But you will not be able to go in and document. So it's very important if you still have open orders you need to sign or documents that you do complete those in McKesson. If you have a question about that, please reach out to your director. So now, uh, same time as McKesson, but of course now um, more hellos to Carrie Fishin. I just want to remind you all about something I had said a few weeks back when we first got started on the 18th. And that is, this software is customizable. You are the architects that are helping us design this so it's specific to us. So you may have seen some changes along the way. There may be things that you saw one day and the next day they weren't there. That's because the software is evolving as we make changes. I know there's been some questions about uh, repetition in the service notes, for example and that's being worked on behind the scenes. There's a couple more weeks before we'll see our, our full corrected service notes. So just be patient and understand that we do not, do not want you to be double charting. So if you see something that has already been documented and you're seeing it again, you can skip over that. Remember in some of the previous trainings, we talked about that, you have to be sure you're charting in the right location. So if there's a question about that, check in again with your directors or go back and look at the training. So uh, again, thank you for your patience. Thank you for your diligence. And also remember, you are part of the architectural team. I mean, maybe that's not even the right word, the design team. So if you're out there charting and you see something, um, we may not know about that. Your supervisor, your director may not know. So it's perfectly acceptable and hopeful that you'll click them and say, hey, I found this on this page. Taking a screenshot is wonderful. It really helps us. So um, with that said, we're going to jump right in and I'm going to pass the mic over to Molly and we're going to talk a little bit about entering your time into Perry. Thanks, Tree. Good morning. And I just want to piggyback on that, uh, what Tree was saying, that if you are having difficulties, don't, um, don't spin your wheels and spend a lot of time. Go ahead and click the, the CE support group in, uh, there's, a, there's a click group that you can click a question to. You can call IT. You can call me. Uh, my extension is 603. So please reach out to us. Um, we wanna we wanna help and, and get it get it rectified as quickly as we can or know about the problem as quickly as we can and don't want you feeling frustrated and and we know that um, you know there's there's a lot to learn and we still have a, a road to go on this. So we are this morning going to be adding another process um, into care efficient. And this is for what I'm going to go over this morning is for clinical staff in the field that gets paid per visit. So um, currently you use the time clock app to uh, start your time for the day and track all your time for the day. Um, your, and, and you also use, I believe you use McKesson for your reg time, your meeting time, and your orientation and, and all that. So, and right, correct, and, and breaks. So uh, we will be using Care Efficient from here on out to track all that. And I have to tell you that payroll is extremely happy about this. So um, if, if there's a lot with payroll, uh, paying people per visit, like a per visit and an hourly rate. And here in California, we have these crazy calculations that our poor payroll has been doing a lot of them uh, manually. And so this, this is going to make payroll very happy as we, as we learn this and get everybody on board. But this process this morning is only for clinical staff in the field that gets paid per visit. So when you start your day, you're at home and you're gonna make phone calls or do whatever, whatever to get ready for your day and you're gonna start clocking your time. You're gonna to go to this 
link right here. Just clock in and you're just gonna click it. And you're gonna get a pop-up window and you are gonna select time for the day and click save. That's it. So now you go about your day. You're gonna see here on your calendar, I'm gonna get a little bubble. So today's the, today is the 26th. So you're gonna see here, I have a little bubble that says time for the day. So it says just, is today the 26th? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm like, what day am I looking at? So I've started my time for the day. So then as the, as the day goes on, um, you know, I am going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to go clock out for lunch. So I'm going to just go here to the clock out, click on that. And I'm going to get a message right here that says clock out success. So that I know that I've been clocked out. So that's it. That's, that's it. So then you would clock back in time for the day after lunch. And then in the evening, when you're finished with your day's work, you'll clock back out. They see two entries. You'll you'll see two entries on that. So you'll see a clock in and clock out on that. That'll be down here on your on your calendar for the day. At the end of a pay period, just like in a uh, time clock where we add the code five hundred, um, you need to add at the end of your pay period. You need to add your code five hundred in here as well. Code five hundred says that you received all of your meals and breaks. And that's going to be up here in this right hand corner, non patient time entry. You're going to click on the non patient time entry. You're going to select a service. The only service there is received all meals and breaks. <laughs> so can't mess this one up. That's the only thing you can only thing you can select. Make sure that the date is, you know, with like the last day of that pay period, you can adjust the state. So if you want to put it in today for your last day of your pay period, that's fine. If you want to do it on Saturday, that's fine. Uh, it just needs to be the last, the last day you worked during that pay period. But you can do this at any time. And then just click save. You don't have to enter a time or a duration or anything. That's it. So for reg time, meeting time, uh, breaks, all of those items are gonna be found down here where it's add pay only. So you go often go down here for your directions and mapping. Molly, uh, uh -huh. a question is sure. I'm still, you know, sometimes I get a little bit too much in my head and I leave without clocking in. Uh -huh. And then I don't end up clocking in until late right. is there a place where i go after the day and and, and move stuff around like I, I like i can do with uh, yes with i'll the show you, i'll show you how to do that you're going to do that. yes oh, okay. yeah i'll show you how to do that <laughs> you moving on and I thought, oh, right. also i'm going to show you the whole all the different areas and then i'll show you where you can go and look at your at your current time and what you've put in. Okay. So then you can make adjustments from there. Thank you. Sure. So this add pay only button down here, click on that and you will select your agency. So your home agency. So if you were assigned to Ventura is your main office or Ojai or Thousand Oaks or and is Camarillo does not in home health, but, but Ojai, Thousand Oaks or Ventura, You'll pick your agency. You you will only have the choice of you, but I, because of, of my permissions on here, I have everybody. I'll select myself. Um, I'm not on here. I'm going to select Rosemary, Mary, and then I am going to select. I can select PDO. I can select holiday. I can. Um, I'll show you where the breaks are. So everything we've tried to, uh, but let us know if it's not. We have tried to uh, put everything by discipline. So um, here's HHA break one, HHH break two. Go down here. There's the LVN break one and two. 
And to clarify that break, um, it isn't that you're putting one is my first break, two is my second break. If you got both breaks, it's two units. So you pick the You two. just select that you one. You just had one break today because you had a shorter day, you choose the one. Right. So I would if 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 uh, Rosemary was an OT, I could pick OT PDO or OT holiday or OT breaks. For the breaks, you just pick that. You don't add anything in here in your times, and you just click schedule and continue. You can click schedule and add more as well. Um, now, if you if you um, for 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 let me just say for PDO, you do have to do it for each day. Right now, there's not an option to select like if you took off a whole week to kind of click on all five five days and put in for that. So there are some things that again, this is one of those things that we are hoping to fine tune this. They actually built this payroll module specifically for Livingston. And so this will be, we will tighten this up and fine tune this a little bit better um, throughout, throughout the summer really. Um, but, but this is where we are right now. So after you've done any of your additional time. So before you get out of that, uh -huh. um, on the duration is where you would put in the unit. That's where you would put in the units, okay. and, and or, or you could do eight to eight to four, right, right, okay. whichever. And then to view your payroll, you go up here to processes. Sorry. So for PDO, they're going to put the time, right? Not Correct. The unit, not the units. Right. For PDO, yeah. you do have to put the time, and you'll get a warning if you're not doing the right thing. So you can't submit something incorrectly. It will tell you what you need to do. If there's if, if there's something missing, it will tell you. So go to, so if you wanna, um, you forgot to add something, you wanted to check, did I clock in? Did I clock out? Not really sure. You wanna look at your, at your, um, at your time entry. You go up here to processes and you go to associate time entry. And so you'll see here, this is my time entry for the day. I can change the dates up here. So I can look and see, you know, I can do it, look at it for a whole week. I can look at it for the day. If I need to make a change for something, I can go over to this edit pencil on the right hand side, click on the edit pencil. And I'm saying, uh, you know what? I, I actually started work at, at seven o'clock this morning. And uh, so I'm gonna make my adjustment there and then save. So on this time for the day, there is an audit trail. So, so your, your manager and supervisor will be able to see if you, know, if you are um, putting, clocky, hitting the clock at, at a certain time and then there's adjustments. So try to, you know, just like now in time clock, try to remember to clock in, clock out, but we know that it happens. Your day gets started, you pick up the phone, your day gets started and you're, you're off <laughs> and running. So. so that is, are there any questions? It's fairly simple. Uh, once you're in it and using it, I think, you know, after a day or so, oh, I see a chat question. Thank you, Jamie. <clears throat> How do we click the, the click, the CE question group? It is, uh, James, the, 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 the care efficient support group is CE support, correct? Yes. Under, but you under, have to under choose. Groups. Under yeah, groups. you have to groups. Groups. That's Under hard. groups, yeah. And you can do this now. We, the, this click group is open. What was the question about duration that Philip asked? Oh, if he had to put in duration or units. So for some of the some of the um, pay onlys, you can just put in a unit like eight after. for PDO. You just put in eight, and then you don't have to put in hours. Like you don't have to put in for eight a.m. to four p.m. for a PDO. You can just put in eight, and it'll take that. But um, like I said, they are. Wait, are we, did we clarify that? No. Just to clarify, when we did it, um, sorry, gang, we had to put a time in to get the, okay, okay, let's get PDO. Okay, let's, 
go back because I could be very wrong on that. They are changing this, oh, not a lot, but there are tweaks to it. So um, let's go in. So I'm going to select my home agency. When you're using this to identify a COVID patient that you have received the preceptor pay for, you do need to choose the patient's name to tie it to that patient. Yep. Yep. So I you apologize for I time. gave you bad directions. So when you first said it, you said you had to put in eight to four. Yep. And it automatically calculates the duration. My apologies. And then save and continue. And so it's going to say it's it, because I've already clocked in for the day. So I'm clocked in. So it's saying you can't clock in for your time for the day and take PDO on the same day. What are you doing? So that's why I'm getting that error message. Um, are there any other questions? Anything else? I to think go the over? timing of when we want everyone to start. Oh, sorry. Uh, so the pay period ends this Saturday. So starting Sunday, you will use this as your as your method for clocking in. So we're not using the cell phones anymore. Not using the cell phones anymore. Yeah, we will not be using time clock anymore. And if there, again, this is, a, you know, this is an important one. And so it's one that you'll, everyone will be doing a lot. So if you're having problems, if on Tuesday you come in, if you're off Sunday, Monday, and on Tuesday you come in and you're like, I just can't remember what I'm supposed to do, please give IT or myself a call and we'll walk you through it. So not a, not a problem. So again, I'm just going to quickly go over. You find your clock in and clock out on the home screen above your calendar. There's the clock in link. There's the clock out link. You do your code 500 from the non-patient time entry. I will tell you this is all that is going to be going down to uh, the same link as the pay only. So we don't have to go to multiple places for things. But for right now, you'll do your your meals and breaks from the non-patient time entry, and then all other PDO, meetings, orientation, preceptor, all the pay onlys, you'll go and add them down here under other actions, add pay only. If you want to review your time for the day or for the week or for any period, you go into processes and you go to associate time entry. We're going to clock in and out for breaks, and, and we may take the time off to go to Target or whatever. Absolutely. Okay. You don't clock out for a break. Okay, you're right. As Sorry. a clinician right. being paid by business. Yeah. Just for oh, lunch. Okay. For, for lunch. lunch. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. There's a chat. There's a chat. How do we do regular time for driving? So there is a rank time in there. Mm -hmm. Mapping. So you go down. One to know two, so I haven't. And uh, yeah, let's see the regular. I have to pick an agency. BBI. Okay. Uh, mostly, I'm going to pick you. And um, I will. So I'm going to scroll fast. I apologize, but if you show them how you can just put P and I take you all the way to PTs or RN. There we go. Um, and then I'm going to go There's to regular time. regular time and just click on that, add the time in here to and from, and then click schedule. So like Jamie was saying, if I if you go in here to the services and you you are an RN, you can just type the letter R and it brings you to the beginning of the RN codes. Or you can type the letter uh, P and it'll bring you to the, the beginning of the P alphabet and the PT codes are right there. Okay. All right, so if, we're, if we know we're gonna be away from our computer on Monday, mm -hmm. um, and we wanna put in our holiday time today or Monday, we can just click on the date yep. and then put it on yes. the holiday. Perfect, that would be a great practice too. Yeah, <laughs> so would, there you go, yeah. 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 I like it. Everybody, <laughs> Molly, I'm sorry. I came in late. Did, did you show them the code 500? I did. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And there's another chat, two yeah. chats. <clears throat>
um, do we enter our mileage in here too? And can I go ahead and do my PDO now for next week? Um, so mileage is done through the uh, directions and mapping piece. So that is down here under directions and mapping. That's where you do your mileage. And when you click save on that, that automatically creates a payroll uh, entry for you. So um, I would say whoever, I, I don't see who, oh, that's for Dinah. Dinah, um, I think you will continue to do your, your mileage sheet. Um, this is only for clinicians that are in the field doing visits. Um, and I should, Sorry, so so office okay, thank you. staff that are paid hourly. This is this is this training is not for you. This is only training for clinical staff um, that get paid per visit. Um, and then do you want us to include what the regular time is for under the comments? Yes. I'm a resounding head shake for yeah. all of the directors. Yes. Please do so. It makes verifying it much simpler. So when you write why you entered this, it's it's terrific. If there's just a bunch of regular time in, then it makes begs the question, why is the time here? And then we have to reach out to you. So it's wonderful if you could put that in the comments. And thank you for bringing that up. And I just wanted to make one um, comment. Um, good morning, everybody. This is Leslie. Um, I uh, noticed one clinician in the therapy department had not entered any mileage time in CE. And so then that made me think, hmm, is this the only person doing this? So I did a quick audit and quite a few of you got clicks from me. Uh, sorry, nursing, I didn't look at yours. Um, and notice that like randomly, like one day in a week, somebody did enter mileage. So <coughs> how you know your mileage entry was successful, you will have a bubble on that day on your home calendar that says pay only dash mileage. So you, you can go back. Yeah, you can do it. Yeah, yeah. and you'll get paid for it. But I'm just saying, so double check yourself, okay? Because I won't always be doing that for you. So um, you deserve to be paid for the, the breaks, the mileage, the meeting time, but it is on you to put these entries in, okay? But it's a new system. And so that's why I wanted to catch it for everybody. And I just want to uh, tailing on that we absolutely want to pay you for all the hard work that you do, and that includes this. So, for example, we have worked out a budget with Gary Fish that involves orientation. So, if you have had separate time where you're maybe zooming with your supervisor or someone to learn something, you put that in as orientation time. If you've come in the office um, to sit down with somebody, we'd like you to put that as orientation time. Are these? Orientation times or are these yes. meetings? I'd like you to start if you've been doing meetings, that's fine. Going forward for the care efficient meetings, if you could enter it as orientation, then we can track that a little bit better. So today should be in McKesson. Orientation. Orientation. orientation and, that, and that's an excellent point because today is still McKesson. Remember, this isn't until Sunday. So yes, today's meeting is orientation. That holiday Monday should be... And care efficient. Oh, correct. There you go. Yeah, thank correct. you. Jennifer. Holiday Monday in care efficient. Sunday, if you do a visit on Sunday, that's in care efficient. And then Tuesday, back to normal, all care efficient. I have a question with that holiday. Uh, uh, for people who are 32 hours a week, mm -hmm. does it automatically populate to the, the numerical value it's supposed to be for? So if, uh, no, I believe you'll have to put in what the hours, so it would be six hours you would put in. For that, because you were you're 32, so you'd get six hours of holiday pay. Six point six four. Oh, six point four. Yeah. Okay. okay. So I will, you know what? I will ask a payroll to send out a kind of a a, a little a little <laughs> note cheat sheet. I was gonna say, yeah. of, of you know, if you're 40 hours, put in this. If you're 32, put in this. 20, because because okay. we will. That we'll that's how it is in McKesson right now too, right? Okay. You have to put yeah. the six point four. It does it automatically now. Yeah, you have to do it. Uh, right. But here we have to do it eight o'clock to yeah. You have to put in the time Maybe like two thirty. So we'll have to see what turns out. Yeah, I'll have I'll ask I'll ask Barb mm -hmm. to send something out so that everybody oh, knows see. exactly what to put okay. in. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions or chats on um, on the time clock feature? When yeah. do we put the 
the hours for the holiday on the holiday itself or on the on the date for the holiday itself so you would go you would go now though yeah you'd go down to your ad pay only so you could do it today so you go to your ad pay only you would go in and select your agency you would go in and select your service which is going to be holiday and then you'd put in, if you were full time, you'd put in, you know, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. and okay. calculate your eight hours. And you'd put the date of the holiday. Uh, right, sorry, thank you. Sorry, Jane. And you'd select the date of the holiday, which is the 31st. So it lets you put things in in the future for the pay only. Can you do the 6.4 just so I can see what it's going to look like? Uh, sure. Let's see. Try 640. Yeah. Or 240. Oh, I was like, that's my guess. That's my guess. Yeah, 240. There you go. Mathematician Leslie. She was an accountant before she was a teacher. Yeah. You don't need no algebra. I was a compliance auditor. Yeah. How much is 7.2? Back in the day. 7.2. Seven point two. Seven point two. Is that what you get? Uh, oh, because you only yeah. Would be three twenty maybe. There you go. All right. Anybody else? One for Leslie. Let's see if she can get three for three. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a carnival sideshow. That's it. Step on up and see Leslie calculate your time. If you have a mask on, right, right. <laughs> I like my mask. Okay, I'm gonna finish so that you guys can finish your rest of your meeting. Thanks, Mark. Delia, here she comes. Good morning, everybody. This is Delia. Uh, just wanted to welcome you guys as well and thank you for all your hard work. I'm gonna log out and then log back in. So give me one second. I'm going to go and find a patient and then talk about the payers tab and where to find insurance information. This is a live patient. Um, if you wanted to find out insurance, you would go to the patient's encounter. And here's your clinical tabs again. Uh, right here where it says payers, this is where you find insurance information. So if you're looking to see what kind of insurance this patient has, it's going to be right here, right under payers, right here, Blue Cross. Um, this one is missing right now and off, but um, we can still use this as demonstration. You're going to go right over here to the magnifying glass. And then it brings you to information about the insurance. It's going to give you the policy number. <clears throat> and then if you need it, you know, the billing address for the insurance is right here, the start date of the insurance. Um, and then it gives you the patient's date of birth as well. Uh, to get more information regarding uh, what the insurance covers, you can come over here right under notes. So there's two different notes. One notes it's over in the clinical tab, and then where we're talking about the insurance payers tab note, it's going to live. It's kind of hidden, but it lives right in here. And this is where you're going to find uh, more information. Uh, you got your MU 150. Uh, you 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 know the type of insurance that it is. Uh, it's covered for home health, and it tells you what percentage the patient is covered at as well as what kind of authorizations that we have and the dates that they're authorized. So that notes tab is inside the payers tab. Yeah, I will go, I'll show you one more time because it's, let's see if I go back. Okay, so right, we're back over here to the patient's encounter. Here's your clinical tab. So in the clinical tabs, you do have a note 
but this is not the one that we're looking for. We're actually going to go to payers. You open up payers, and then you have to come down here, and you want to look further in, and you get you have all these other little tabs here as well, but it's going to be the notes right here, and that gives you all the information that you need for your insurance for the insurance for this patient. The one other question that um we we kind of went through this the, the other the other day the other time we had the meeting. But if you guys have questions that's something that we've covered and you're still not sure, please reach out to us. We can always cover it again or you know do a one-to-one -one as well. Value, you have a chat. Okay. Give me one second, Shelby. I'll finish my my talk and then we'll go back. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the patient encounter. The other thing that you might want to look for is maybe your, your nomic or your insurance financial information. So to get that, you're going to go back to the patient encounter. You're going to go to your docs and then bring your tab down. And here's, uh, we, we try to list everything as uniform as we can. Um, if you see something out of place, you know, let one of us know so we can correct it. Uh, but it should live right here where it says insurance and financials. And here's your, your nomic. If you, to open it, you just click it. Bring up this arrow, open, and it's going to bring up your, your nomic. So this is just the, the nomic, piece, which you could actually print from your desktop. And then, oops. I have a question regarding the nomic. Uh, ultimately, our goal is to do all the uh, documentation EMR, correct? We're going to have them signing the tablet and everything else. Is that going to be possible for the nominic as well? Yes, it yeah. will be. Oh. All forms will be able to be signed electronically. Perfect. And we're getting there. Uh, yeah, we're it, it, Care Efficient is ready for us to do that. It's just a little bit of, um, it's more due to COVID and people's comfort level with someone touching their tablet, but CDC guidance is, it's safe, et cetera. But, so we're gonna roll that part out fairly soon. Okay. I think a lot of people are anxious to make that happen. And here's your um, intake process sheet. So this is gonna give you information on, you know, that first call the patient receives a questionnaire. So this is, this is the doc area where all the documents live from the intake puts in, and as well as like your photographs that you take of the patient, the his, history and physical. And that's, that's it for me right now. Um, let's go back to that question. It was uh, how to enter time for dropping labs off. And I believe that's regular time, isn't it? Yes, so that should be regular time. Yeah. Okay. Did you want me to go to that regular time? No, I think, I think we're good. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay, so I'm going to switch it over to Leslie. Did you get that um, one, two answer early later? You guys, okay. Um, I'm going to go over discharge um, documentation and discharge summary forms. Okay, so Cheryl Mays and I went through the nursing and the PT discharge from agency service note. The OASIS is embedded in there. Uh, we went through it side by side. There were um, just a few things that were different, but the one thing we wanted to reach out to you guys about was how to avoid having to duplicate your journey. So um, I, as a physical therapist, can only see a physical therapy service note. So that's what we're gonna go through. Um, where is my discharge? Okay, so I'm gonna pull up a discharge uh, service note with the OASIS in it. Okay, so um, 
what we found now, I hope you guys are probably, you know, you guys are living in these documents a lot now. You've done a bunch of them. So I just find the easiest thing to do is to go to this uh, drop down list. And we noticed a major duplication. So the discharge summary V2. Um, so just so you all know, for both therapy and nursing, these two items sit in the same order. The discharge summary V2 form opens before, and then the next page is the discharge other information. They're practically, there's so much duplication, you guys. So this is the one we need you to put everything, answer every prompt. So if there's a prompt, so this, this because this uh, section, the V2, flows to the discharge summary, okay? So what's important is that you fill out every prompt. This item right here, patient outcomes, flows to the form. Lab, the, other than the top one, reason for discharge, this one, two, three, four, five, all five of those flow to the discharge summary form. So you gotta fill them out here so that they can flow. Um, these additional items all should be answered. Believe it or not, the narrative notes right down here. This is where we want you to be putting your narrative note for your discharge visit. There's two other places for a narrative note in this document. So we want you to ignore those. So um, you're doing this document, you fill things out. For therapy, you're gonna write NA or or you may know. Do you want me to clarify? Yeah, yeah, Cheryl. I want Cheryl to type so, in on how you should fill out lab data. So lab data is not the results for labs. So for this for therapy, you're gonna put NA. Uh, for nursing, again, it's what tests you performed. So if you did a UA, if you've done a CBC, CMP, CRP, ESR with like a, a pick line, it's just the labs you draw that day performed. Yeah. That discharge or that or for the whole episode, but it's not the data, not the result data. So it's a quick and dirty what what labs you drew. And and if you don't know, if you're discharging somebody that you didn't see before, you can look on the orders tab and view orders, and it should have what you should be drawing there. Okay, good. It, therapist, if you do happen to know because you're in the know that this patient had a UA or they had a CBC. You can put that in, it would be helpful. Um, it's not a requirement. I'm not asking that you research the chart, but if you do know this information, and lots of times you do, uh, if you know a patient's getting PTI and R's, please fill that in, uh, in this box. Okay, so then you've done that, you're gonna hit next, and then take a look at this form. Narrative note, duplication. Discharge teaching. There's another place earlier in this document for that. Progress towards goals. Uh, you documented that in your task actions and your task goals. Patient gave her comments. Um, I believe there's a place for that earlier. So just be aware. So this box this will be completely ignored. We're by nursing and therapy. You know, and the service note is fixed. And they are in the process of having nursing and therapy service notes fixed or improved. This will not be there the next, you know, once that happens, this will not be in your service note. So for now, you do not need to answer this section. Yeah. And OTs, you're lucky because this doesn't even appear in yours. <laughs> so that's that's the um, thing we found out. Okay, so now um, I'm going to segue into the discharge uh, oh, form. Wait, wait, isn't there? There was a chat about, um, oh, okay, hang okay. Um, okay, Lorraine. Under docs, sorry, Daniel, hang tight. I'm just going to answer these in order. Under docs, do pics go under photographs or wound? For photographs. Uh, the choice is photographs. In the yeah, photographs. Photographs, Lorraine. Okay, and everyone. Okay, Daniel. No, we're getting to that. Right. So, okay, what Daniel's point is, they, okay, so right <coughs> now things are not, sometimes they flow, sometimes they don't. We were in communication with Care Fisher yesterday morning about this. We. And we have we are working with them daily to get this fixed. Okay, so let me go to um, and before you go to the next section, Leslie. Oh, isn't yeah. the next page also a duplicate in this document? 
I do not believe so. There is the next one still says narrative. Yes. Yeah. Oh, forgive me. Thanks, Jamie. Yeah. So again, here's the so it was the B2, then the discharge other, and then the narrative teaching ABN. Again, another narrative note, another teach. So you can skip this as well. Yeah. And just whenever you guys see ABN, just think nomic. We're going to ask them to have this change. ABN advanced beneficiary notice. It's a rare thing. <laughs> we have them sign. Um, so that's maybe just a little but that's just semantics. To this, right. So when you see ABN, your brain says nomic. It's not the last visit. There's, there's, that's not right. But sometimes you do sign on the last visit. I've heard nobody before you got the nominic sign and you you have the nominic sign on your discharge visit Wednesday. Mm -hmm. You put the discharge date down for Friday. You give that patient a quick call. Just want to confirm you're in agreement with discharge. Yes, I am. Everything's going well. Thank you very much. And then, so that's that's how we handle those situations when the staff has not been able to either coordinate with each other or didn't have the form with them. For some reason, it didn't get signed 48 hours in advance. Okay, so and you look like you have a question about that. Please? Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> okay. So I want to go to, I'll just pick one of my patients. Um, so the discharge summary form is something that we need. We are asking all therapists and all nurses when you are the person responsible for the discharge from agency. Um, you need to fill out the DC from agency form. Let me, um, sorry, you guys, I don't have, I've got a, um, uh, I guess I'm just going to, um, but this one's already filled out. Let me see a blank one. Um, you could discharge Flannery. I'll just discharge her. She's getting discharged today. Okay. So... So yeah. Leslie's showing you how this patient wasn't in a discharge status and you know you're discharging your patient. So you discharge, you, you mock discharge patient and then this form comes up. You always pick that. Okay. And now that form lives here. So you're generally gonna find the form orders tab, the order section, your patients probably are not this complicated, you know, busy. I have five things under this section. So there it is. So it just says initiated. So I need to go into the pencil to edit this. It's technically in order. So you're gonna check that it's the patient's name. You're gonna check the diagnosis. Um, if you find that the primary diagnosis here still says cholera, do not complete and approve this document. You can't send it to a doctor with the wrong diagnosis, with our, with our placeholder of cholera. Can we uh, begin it? Or yes, you can start it. And yes, and close and close. absolutely. So it shows the doctor it's being sent to, all the orders. It shows... So a lot of stuff is populated. A lot is. You got orders, meds, outcomes. Those are your care. Those are the goals for your care needs. Not the interventions, just the goals by category and includes all disciplines. So if there had been nursing and OT on this case as well, you would see a care need that started with SN, maybe, um, you know, whatever it is, skilled nursing would be addressing plus OT. So. The only things that you guys are going to need to quickly come in and populate are this stuff. You're going to put NA, condition stable, uh, uh, follow up without patient and PT, reasons for home health, post THR. You, only if there's something important you think the doctor needs to know. So if this is um, can or cannot be blank. These things all should have something in it. And, and then um, you're going to sign it. Now, I had a um, staff member ask me, but it says nurse. Mm -hmm. Interpret this as clinician. So you're going to enter your signature. You not close it before you. Yeah. Okay. So it pops up to the top. Just bear with the, the system does that. 
Okay, then I'm gonna pause, Jamie. Right. So uh, the reason Leslie said about the patient outcomes, additional comments is that this is optional is because above it, if you notice the title, it says patient outcomes and meeting the goals in the plan of care. So this here is for the doctor's information, all the goals of all the disciplines and what you guys had for this patient. So the only time you'd have additional information in here, if there's something to the exception, not able to do, didn't accomplish this goal because of such and such, or so that's what this box is for. Currently, the patient outcomes, this is all due to the mapping, is not showing met, met, met. It will, as you guys are meeting your goals, and when this populates, you will see that in here. For right now, how it goes to the doctor, we're not asking that you go in and change anything that goes there. It's, it's sufficient the way that it is. It will have, it will be improved from here because you will be able, the doctor will be able to read the word met or not met. Um, and for right now, we're sorry that you have to answer this in your V2 and also here, but we believe that this could be fixed in the next two days. Care efficient yesterday showed that it was mapping correctly. On our end, it's not. It's not an enhancement. It's just doing something behind the scenes, compute like um, techie wise, that should make this all happen. So I believe with a lot of confidence that this is going to very <coughs> soon be fixed. So you sign, this is a, um, I'm gonna go with sign, sign, approve. So now, I can't approve this yet because I don't have a proper diagnosis in here. But if I did, I'm just gonna go with that because this is a fake patient. I'm also gonna enter my approval signature here. I hit accept, go back down to the bottom and I'm gonna hit approve. So if you're wondering, gosh, did I do it right? Is that, now go back. Now you see that the discharge summary, my name is now here because I signed on the bottom mm -hmm. left. It's in an approved status. Medical records can now send this out. So um, I just want you guys, so anybody you've discharged in the past days, past week needs, these need to get out the door. We This is a condition of, um, Participation, we are required to notify a doctor of discharge within five days of discharge. And so having Leslie said that, even if you can't get your service note to an approved status, this must be done on the day that you um, discharge your patient. So even if you can't complete your service note, and since it's not populating right now, go into this order where the discharge summary is and complete it so that this can get out the door to the physician. Because if you're waiting to get your service note done, because that has a whole oasis in it, just like when we were dealing with Anna, uh, who was helping us in McKesson, we said, even if your oasis is not done, just get the discharge summary part done so that Anna can get it out the door. When Joint Commission was here three years ago, we were written up for being out of compliance with this. When that happens, when Joint Commission comes back the next time, they look to see what your deficits were the last time they were here to make sure that we are in compliance. And we are at risk right now because we are not in compliance. So prior to Care Efficient, we were doing better. And we're going to have uh, a policy to explain these last six weeks or so. But then come June 1st, the expectation is that this needs to get done. And it, well, it needs to be get done today, but we're, the policy will probably cover about these last six weeks while we are doing care efficient transitioning. Um, so we really must be in compliance with this. If you have any questions, if you can't get it completed, if you need help from the office, we can help you do this. We can go in and populate this. If you're driving in the car and you just can't get it done, but you want it, yeah, call, call our supervisor, call me. We will type in here what you need. We'll get to an approved status and we'll get it out the door. That's right now. The expectation is eventually it really will be working correctly and on you guys. But 
it's very important this process gets done. Yes. If I've had a few start of cares that didn't need further therapy, no other disciplines. Am I going in and discharging them and then doing that after I did the start of care oasis? Oh, you mean just just one start and just that's one it? Start, yeah. Yeah, we, we do need a discharge summary. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, so do the oasis question. and then go in. <laughs> yes. Okay. And and you may be filling in those box one visit only, you know, right. and just what your skill was and letting the doctor know. You, you can use, you know, your <laughs> professional critical thinking of this is to inform the physician of the status of their patient. There's not a requirement of exactly what needs to go in those boxes. So if you did one visit and you put in there, you know, patient required only one visit, able to do whatever they were able to do, that would be sufficient. It's just to inform the MD of the status of their patient. So when you do, when you're the discharge, you're the discharge clinician, whether you're a nurse or an OT or PT or speed, you, you've done your discharge oasis service no. You've gotten that to the approved status. You, as soon as you've gotten it to the approved status and this little glitch is fixed, you then have to remember to come down and get this form to the approved status. We are not doing this behind the scenes for you guys. So you have to, instead of you guys used to, send your note to Jennifer and Anna Irella Baker. Jen, please review the discharge. Anna, please send the DC summary. And you were done. Now you get your discharge document to an approved form. Uh, Joyce Steingold is doing the discharge reviews. It goes to her automatically in QA. She runs a report. She sees what discharge service notes are in an approved status. So she knows she will, she, that's in her inbox. She checks her inbox, I don't know, probably a couple of times a day. And there is no note to Anna or someone else to get this form to the approved status. That is your job. So just know that, but it will not flow to this document. So this discharge summary, the flow will not happen until your discharge OASIS service note is in an approved status. So the timely documentation, we're ideally within one, Within 24 to 48 hours, you've gotten that document to that status. This, this form can be completed, marked approved, and medical records will get it out the door. Hopefully no later than day three. We have five days to do it. Leslie, so, you have two chats. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully all good stuff. <laughs> um, Alan, prior, prior, I thought it was just DC. Um, it's, it is discharge summary form. <laughs> B2, oh no. No, just start summary form. The discharge summary one is just one blank box, looks like a missed visit box. You guys have seen those, you guys are doing those. So, um, oh, you missed one up top. So I'm not coming across as that. Oh, we got that one. So, um, yeah, we addressed that. Yeah, we'll we addressed that, that, yeah. that. Yeah, so all of that um, will get fixed. We'll get, yeah, it's getting fixed. <laughs> and from, okay, there was just a yes. I'm going. Not sure what yes, Matt Lauren. I think yes, I think everything is great. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jane, the question. Okay. Um, say nursing did the start of care. They saw the patient for a couple times, and then a PT eval is ordered. I evaluate them, and I determine they don't need therapy anymore. Am I filling out a PT eval, and then where do I find? Say that nursing transferred them to therapy. That's happening. So where right. do I get? And you only do an eval, so then we have to add a discharge, discharge oasis from the oasis tab, which we can show you how to do that. We have a couple other things to cover right now. So when that happens, and I think you have that because you and I were clicking last night on mm -hmm. that one patient. So I'll show you how, okay. how you do that. Actually, reach out to Kina because she's a pro at it. Okay. Um, and then you'll be able to just add the oasis, kind of like how in McKesson, how we go and add a clinical form in your name. It'll be very similar. We'll just go to the OASIS tab and add a discharge OASIS, and then we'll have to do the discharge summary okay. as well. And when that happens, and it's not covered in your normal visit rate to do this aspect of what you need to do, keep track of the regular time that you're doing to do this, and you enter regular time. 
but don't think of it as something I have to do and I'm not getting paid for it. You will get paid for it and we really do need it done. And we need it done timely. Okay, it, does, are there any other questions on the discharge process? And thank you, Leslie, for pointing out that the diagnosis is not there. If you guys notice that, please send Kina a click and say, hey, I'm ready to do my discharge and it's not coded. Kina's super on top of coding. She's been helping with so many things. So coding right now is a little bit behind. I really believe we're all going to be in a very good rhythm come June 1st. Uh, we're all a little bit behind, but we're getting caught up. So if you notice that, please just click Kina and she'll get on it. Okay, James, do you want to show them how to do what you're going to show them before I go? Because I wanted to show them something based on what you showed them. Sure. That sounded mysterious and exciting. <laughs> it's anything but. <laughs> Super secret. Awesome. You have to unsure. Uh, I think you do new share. Stop share or new share. Stop share. Okay. You take over. So James is going to show you guys. So this, I'll, I'll give the preface for it. Especially for nursing, many of your care needs state, like for example, for the pick line dressing chain, it states as one of the steps, one of the interventions <clears throat> performed per clinical procedure manual. That might not be the exact wording, but something along those lines. So we need everyone to know and to have access to the clinical procedure manual of Livingston. When joint commission comes, they can ask every single clinician, where is your clinical procedure manual? How do you access it? So James is going to show you how to download this onto your tablet. When you are, for example, as a nurse and you're doing the pick line dressing change and it states, per clinical procedure manual, that, that's your clue to make sure that you're following the clinical correct clinical procedure way of changing the pick line dressing. So the manual will now, James is gonna show you how to download it onto your tablet. If you ever have a question of how you're supposed to do something, you'll access the clinical procedure manual and everything is right there for you. Tracheostomy care, it states per clinical procedure manual. Wound vax, you know, all the complicated, highly skilled things that nursing staff do is in the clinical procedure manual. Therapist is not as much that applies to you in there, but proper hand hygiene is, infection control is, uh, uh, proper bag technique. So there are things for therapists in there as well, but it is very heavily nursing oriented. Um, you know, how to change the catheter properly. All of that kind of stuff is in your clinical procedure manual. So James is going to show all of us, and if you take out your tablet, which I advise you guys to do if you can, and follow the steps, it's amazing. It shows up there and it's perfect. So take it away, James. Okay. That's the mystery. Mystery. <laughs> so, so, so this is a, a, you know, this is my tablet screen here. Everybody's tablet screen is pretty much the same. And uh, we have this little icon right here. It's the Microsoft OneDrive. Go ahead and click on that and open it up. It, uh, it's gonna default to the, to the homepage and yours, unlike mine, is gonna be totally blank. I use this frequently. You can see I'm in a lot of groups and we share a lot of different files back and forth. You have not shared anything yet, so your tablet does not know that. So in order to find, these shared libraries. You see down here at the bottom, these are all of the different groups that I'm in. On the left-hand column, there's a little bookshelf. It looks like three books. Two of them are uh, straight up and one of them is crooked. If you click on that, it says shared libraries, right? Yours is going to be blank. Let's slow down just a second to make sure. Is, is everybody at that spot? Is everyone at the, the shared library spot with the... For me, I move a little slower than James when it comes to this IT stuff. So I just want to make sure everyone is where you need to be so that this is successful. Yeah. Oh, this folder is empty. So Philip says this folder is empty. Okay. Yes. Everyone's folder is empty. Okay. I use mine frequently, so it is full. 
Okay. Right? Yes. If you're looking for a library, you're going to click on the magnifying glass in the upper right hand corner. That is the search button. And this is like this on every single page in the Microsoft OneDrive. So if you're looking for something, you go to the search field. And today we're going to type in Livingston into the search field. And then press enter. So we are going to, this is going to search for any shared library. We only have one titled Livingston Memorial VNA team site. This is company wide. So this, everybody in the company has access to this. And this is how we're going to share documents going forward into the future so that everyone has access to them, such as your clinical uh, procedure manual. So if you click on it, it's going to open up the Livingston Memorial VNA team site. Doesn't have a whole lot of stuff in it yet. Just a documents folder. How is everyone? Is everyone following along so far? Is everyone at this spot? Does anyone need help? In the chat, there's two questions. Oh, sorry. Oh, you got that, James? I don't have access to it. Uh, mine is asking for- uh, Okay, they said never mind. mind. Okay. okay, thanks, Marianne. Okay, so everyone's here. They have this, this is what theirs looks like. That's his documents. Okay, so James is going to move forward. So if you do have a, if it does ask you to sign in, it's your Livingston Memorial email address and your computer password, right? We synchronize all these things to Microsoft. It works the same for your email, your OneDrive, anything that's Microsoft related is all your email address and your current computer password. Okay, so once you get up to the team site, it's imperative that you check this little star up in the upper right hand corner. You're gonna, you're gonna follow it, right? It uses social media terminology. So you click on that little star and you turn it white. And that way, the next time you come here, you're gonna default to the home screen and it's gonna show up down here on the bottom. It's gonna say LM. Mine in particular is red. Yours may be green, orange, or beige, right? The next time you wanna come in here, you're, you open up the OneDrive for any reason. You want to look at the clinical procedure manual. If we put other things in there in the future, oh, geez. I have two of them, so. so you're going to click on it, and we store our documents in the document folder. And these are the various things that are in the folder as of right now, right? Here's your clinical procedure manual. You click on that, James. Yeah. We've got a, a, a couple of other folders that we're starting to populate, but for now, the so, clinical procedure manual is here. So you guys, this is the clinical procedure manual. And so if, if James was to go into that search bar up at the right and he was to put in the word C-A-T-H, it will take you to all of the, 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 the titles or the contents that has to deal with catheters. And then you could click on that. So a catheter for external for a male, uh, whichever one, James, and then you'd see this here. So one, it's wonderful to have at your fingertips. Two, you want to make sure you know how to access this so that if you are asked by anyone, you now know how to access this. And the search feature works for anything that's inside this folder you could possibly think of. Put the word blood and up comes uh, things to do with blood. <laughs> a blood spill. What do I do? Here's a procedure manual. Can you go back into the folders and show them? I want to, I put the cheat sheets in there. Yeah, we'll, yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry, Jane. No, it's okay. We, I do want to get that, but does anyone have any questions about the clinical procedure manual? Or, or is everyone's now showing up? Can you guys see it? Everyone in this room? Can, is it working? Yep. Okay. Anyone on the, the Zoom call? Is, are we all good? Yeah. Okay. The next thing that we want to, sh okay, Lisa says good. The next thing that Leslie wants to show you 
we have been talking to you guys, you know, for the last X number of weeks about all these processes and procedures. And I, for one, have my head spinning and think I have things kind of straight. We recognize that everything needs to be written out and step by step. So we created in this same area a folder called Care Efficient for Clinicians. We will continually be putting information into this file for you. This is a quick and dirty way of going into, um, how do I do that? Oh my gosh, it's right here. How do I edit a missed visit? How do I discharge from the agency? These are the five things that are in there right now. Later on today, we will enter, we have um, what to do if a patient's not a start of care. What to do if there's a start of care that wants a different day. What I have, a, I'm a home health aide and I need to tell Eva, my schedule, or in this case it'd be Yvonne, what do I do? All that type of information will be in this folder. If there's something specific that you need and it's not in there, shoot me, Leslie, Delia, Jeannie, uh, Cheryl, Antonio. We all sit together daily. We work together. We'll get something put in writing and it will show up here. Care efficient, the wiki help is very good. So I hate duplicating things, but this is kind of in our words of how we've been speaking to you guys. So I think it will be helpful. Right. Leslie, do you want to show them one of the things that's in there that you've sure. created? Can I jump on here, James? No, what do you want me to click on? Click on, um, I guess, just, just well, I mean, these are the cheat sheets Miss that visits, I okay. have. Um, clinicians is really good. Okay, sure, click mm -hmm. on that one. Oh, and I have written you one. So, many times. so now in the beginning, I was super specific, like every click had a picture. Now, I think if I were to write new patient schedule, y'all would know how to do that. Yeah. If I were to, you know, so just, um, I don't know why I went all Texas. Now. I was going to say, when did you get a text? Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I am I'm learning lots about Leslie, mathematician, Texas accent. No, I don't know why I did that. Um, so in the, in the first ones I've created, you'll see more pictures and more real specific directions. Now I feel like I can say, go to your patient, go to the orders tab, go to the 45, go to the drop down arrow. Da, 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 you know. So I'm um, I'm getting a little briefer how I'm creating these. I did create one last night on how to enter an addendum order. Um, and so I'm gonna upload that today. Jamie reviewed it, said it looks good. So we're gonna put it in. I'm also gonna create within the next hopefully 24 hours how to add orders to the 485. So um, and if you're having trouble adding orders to the 485, but the 485 is in that saved status, meaning it's open. It hasn't been sent out to the door to the doctor. We really want you guys to reach out to me or your, your therapy, your supervisors or directors to see, let us, let us help you tweak it. Let's, let's see what the problem is because we don't want to just knee jerk. Oh, I can't do it. I'll just write an addendum order. So, um, just remember, please, remember yeah. the more addendum orders we write, the more signatures we need from physicians. And we don't want to be flooding our referral sources with an excess number of orders that really aren't necessary. And sometimes we might need to do an addendum order, but we have a written order for it. So then we don't need to send it out the door. We might need it to get visits on your calendar, but it doesn't need to go to the physician again to sign. So there's a lot of little caveats that... Um, in this learning phase that we should run by our supervisor. And I just want to state all of these, all this information that's in CE right in this folder right now is for every discipline. These are not therapy or nursing. This is the same for, for everyone, regardless of your discipline, this applies to you. This says CE had to co-sign for PTA visit. We'll put one in that says CE had to co-sign for, well, they don't co-sign for LDM visits. It's yeah. just the, yeah. um, I think the nursing supervisor. We need LVN orders, but sorry. Yeah. And to clarify that that top one that says how to enter orders and the number two is that's my second version of that document. That's really if you do the start of care and PAS doesn't help you, that's how you do it. So that's written actually for PAS to follow. And it's a weekend. And you, you know, it's really important for you guys to really know all the steps and not 
you know, to you should know all the steps, even though PIS helps you guys probably 90% of the time. It's that's what that one's written for. So I may change the title of it because that's not a broad, that's not how you enter all orders. That's just meant for orders after start of as the started care clinician. So I'm gonna rename that later today. Okay. Sorry. I, I'm going to, I only I know it's already, we try to keep these to an hour. It's getting a little longer. I'm gonna very quickly go through two or three little things. It won't take a long time. And then you guys, if you have questions, ask. I uh, just want to remind everyone, we're going to continue doing these every Wednesday um, until you hear differently. We may have some breakout sessions that will just be nursing if it's specific to nursing clinical care. And we may have just therapy ones if it's specific to therapy care. But so far, our meetings have been universal for, um, for all disciplines. So are you putting it back that I can? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I'll just stay logged in as you because it's not. Okay, sure. Yeah. If you don't want. That's fine. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So how do I okay, share screen, right? Yes. And it's, which one would you go to? I think this one. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Share on the right hand side. Thank you. Okay. So very quickly, I wanted to just go into, you have a reader that I'm fine already, right? Um, yeah, right there. Okay. It's open again. Oh. I just wanted to, there's been excellent uh, questions from you all. I'll just let you know. Uh, I'll go over the patient. Uh, I want to show them interventions. So let's do, who is your great patient that you tried on? Oh, Williams. Yes, Douglas Williams. So this is a service note that Cheryl Mays did, which is absolutely the most beautiful note I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> but it is not the expectation. So that's why I'm bringing up the most amazing note I've ever seen. Um, to let you guys know that this is not what you, you know, is expected. I understand these task actions and the interventions um, as a patient has more comorbidities and things going on, there could be a lot of different care needs with lots of interventions. One, let's take that into account. And after we assess our patient, really enter care needs that you need to address with this patient. What really is our focus? And the things that the patient's well-managed and don't need our attention, don't add a care need for that because your notes are getting very thick and heavy and some of the items aren't necessary. So really think about it. And when you're working with your PAS, what exactly do we need to do for this patient and enter those care needs? And sometimes the care need has five interventions, but this patient may only need two of those interventions. So then only put in the two, just because the care need has six, seven possible interventions for a Parkinson's, let's say. But if the patient knows how to, you know, eat healthy and you don't need that as an intervention, don't put it in your, don't add that to that care need. So you don't have to address that. So here you have what the title of the care need is. This is the intervention for Parkinson's and then the task actions completed. The comments box is more for to the exception, not to, um, if what if you are completed to the specific intervention and there's no nothing more that needs to be said, you completed it, you do not need to add a comment. I don't want you guys getting weighed down with putting a comment in on every single thing. If there's an exception, like uh, I'm going to say this all wrong, but you're doing a wound back and it says to do the black foam. And for whatever reason, you had to use blue foam. That would be a comment that you would maybe add that you use blue foam instead of black foam. I know that's not a perfect example, but I was trying to think of something that's an exception. So that's what you should use the comments box for. If it's something that 
you did with your patient and the patient's spouse had concerns about it, that could be a comment. You know, the patient's spouse was worried that this is too much walking. Use the comments box that way. Like I said, this note is beautiful, but we don't have this um, expectation for you. Our documentation needs to show skill. It needs to show the patient's response to it. And you have other spots where you can write that. And you need to have a plan for next visit and your assessment of what's going on with the patient, which is included in the following pages. So I hope that clarifies what the comments box needs to. I know some of the therapists will say, teach on home exercise program. And then they're writing in the comments box all the exercises that they taught the patient. But yet in your note, you have your exercise box. So that's where you'd be putting the exercises, not the comments box. I hope that kind of clears that up in a short way. Nobody's not muted. Sorry, guys. Oh, I can't see your screen. Gosh, don't I do that wrong every single oh, time? Dang it. Can you? It says that screen, screen share. Right? Stop share. Are you guys able to see it now? Are you seeing this beautiful note? No, I cannot. Hit stop share in the upper right hand no. corner. Oh, and then hit share again. And choose screen in the upper left hand corner. Okay. The top one. This I see share. Share, yeah. This too? Yeah. I thought we wanted to. Oh, want 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 no, you want to share the whole screen. Oh, uh, uh, like this you're saying? And yes. then hit share? Yes. Because uh, okay. if you share only Chrome and you have a PDF pop up, it only shows Chrome. It doesn't show the PDF pop up. Well, I'm going to give you guys the opportunity to look at this amazing note and then I'm going to take it away. <laughs> <laughs> so are we good? Everyone can now see this? Okay. So that's on that. And then I wanted to, oh, and so the next thing, super briefly, I really want everyone to get used to this notes tab. Remember in McKesson, we all sent each other lots of notes and they, they'd show up in your box as follow-ups. This is the same thing, but you just don't get it specifically in your box. But if this is your patient, you should get very, comfortable and familiar and make it part of your habit of going into if Mr. Williams is my patient and opening looking then looking through these notes to see if there's something that's um, important for you to know because that's where that type of information is going to go it's going to live in this notes tab just like it lived in communication notes in McKesson just so everyone please get familiar before you go out and see your patient to reading these notes Look to see the status of the patient. We've had clinicians who either didn't get the click, which they should have, a, a human error, but had they opened up their chart in Care Efficient, they would have seen the patient was on hold, or you would have seen the hospitalization note. So, and we really are going to try and use Care Efficient the way it's designed to be used. And gradually, we'll be using less and less of clicks. So I just want everyone to really get comfortable and familiar with looking for information in the patient's chart. Um, reminds me, on discharges, we didn't show them the calendar. Just want to also uh, point out, if before you do a discharge, because we've had at least we, four this week. Oh, you did yeah, do that? We did oh, this sorry. last week, but let's go over it. Okay. We did it. Yeah, Delia did that last week. Okay. There's four patients this week that were discharged, and yet... The patient still had another discipline going out to see to see them. So it's it's probably you know it's it's more work for you, the clinician, if you discharge the patient and, the, and they're not meant to have a discharge. So please, before you put your patient at discharge status, go to the patient's calendar and see. So, like if I was the speech therapist, you know, this is my last visit as a speech therapist, and I think, oh, I'm discharging the patient. I want to look in and see, wait, there's visits after me. I'm just doing a discipline discharge, not an agency <coughs> discharge. Because once you put that patient at discharge status and you complete your service note with the discharge oasis in it, it gets, you know, it's a lot of stepping backwards and it's a lot more work. So really please be cognizant of, is this patient really being discharged? The tiny, the last other thing I wanted to just say is, um, normally our agency is very, very conscientious of, um, lupus. We have not been able to be 
uh, as on top of Lupa data and informing you guys of how many visits you need to do to avoid the Lupa. So I'm asking for your help right now until we are more up to speed. If you have a payer that pays like Medicare, so those are Humana's, Medicare, um, uh, WellCare, um, there's one other one that we have kind of off of TRICARE, reach out to me, Keena, Jennifer, Leslie, your nursing supervisor to ask, hey, how many do I need? We're gonna get better at it and letting you know. But for example, we have it, oh, it's Burke. Oh, what were you No, I was just gonna give you a patient. Oh, thank you. Burke is one, he's discharged, but I wanted to show you guys where you can look. If you can't get in touch with us or you just are independent and want to know, on, on any one of your patients, you would go to the orders tab and you would go to um, 40, the drop down 45. No, I'm sorry. You go to the, the I'm sorry, sorry. When I'm on the spot, sometimes I forget. I think it's oh, the start of care. One. I meant to be in the start of care. You go to the start of care oasis. I'll go backwards. You go to the orders tab. You go to the oasis section of the orders tab. You look for the start of care. You go to the drop down arrow and you see PG. PDGM analysis. And this here will show you. Is it thinking or did I not click on it? Okay. This here is a beautiful page. It tells you so much about your patient. So I'm going to make it a little wider. It tells you your lupa threshold right here. You need to do three visits to avoid the lupa. Okay. It tells you a lot of other information, most of which you're probably not that interested in, but this is super important. The three for the lupa threshold. So just so you guys know, so this episode, yeah, I'll do it. Okay, I'll do it slowly. This episode, if we had not been a lupa, we'd be reimbursed $2,600. This one happens to be a lupa. We only will be paid about uh, but maybe $550. So you see how much money we left on the table because we didn't do one visit. We did two. If we had done three, we would have been reimbursed this. It's important to our agency revenue. Let me show um, you guys again how to get there. So you're in your patient and you want to know what the loop of threshold is. You go to the orders tab. You go down to the start of care oasis, this one. The little drop down arrow, and you see how it says PDGM analysis. You click that on. Now, this only works if it's coded. So, Keener's definitely prioritizes getting. Okay, I clicked it. I need to do yeah, it's also getting out. Let me try again. Maybe it knows the meeting should be over. <laughs> and then saying, Jamie, you've talked too long. Okay, so <clears throat> this is where you find it. I, I'm not sure why we're getting an error code, but um, please, everyone, this is where the information is. In McKesson, remember it used to um, track for you the number of visits. It would say, you are two of five, you are three of five. This system doesn't do that. So if you knew there needs to be five visits and I'm getting close to discharge, and you're like, well, I don't know how many visits happen because I can maybe do one more. Go to the service notes and check how many visits happen. One start of care happened. One routine visit happened. Oh, maybe we're not a lupa. And we made it. I did. We, no, and oh, this one's not a lupa. Great. Show them the service dates if you really want the exact date of the visit. Yeah, it's right here, column. five, nine. Even though there's three things here, that's because the Oasis was locked, unlocked, locked. And that will happen a lot because as it goes through QA, that's the process. You'll see three, it's only one visit that happened on five, nine. You can tell by the times there's one visit. Then we had a routine visit for nursing, another routine visit, and then an MSW visit. Oh, so this, I'm thinking of a different page. And there was a plan. No, I did. There was a planned therapy visit after the social worker visit and the patient declined. So that social worker visit will get covered because we the routinely, plan was to do, yeah, the yeah. plan was to do an eval for PT patient declined. 
So that's how you know how many visits happen. You could also go to the patient's calendar. I think this is easy. Any questions on that? Okay, I think we covered a lot. All right, thank you everyone. Thanks for your patience. Thank, thank you. you. Such a great yeah. job. We're all gonna get there. It's getting better every day. I promise. Yeah. Oh, you're